Hey everyone, I'm Rachel. Uh, I can be found on Instagram, Ravelry, and Twitter as Welford Pearls. Um, welcome to April's show. I um, am re-recording this because, as you may know, April's show was completely a jumbled mess when it comes to the audio. Um, so I decided to take the opportunity to re-record. I've actually been working on a few things since I recorded last week, so I am going to take the opportunity to show you a couple things. Um, James isn't napping, so we might have some interruptions, but I thought I would take the opportunity to sit down um, and re-record the show when I have an opportunity. Um, so I'm sorry about the two shows. I'm going to delete the other show, and this will be the only live show. If you're confused, just forget about it. This is the only show that's going to exist after this gets uploaded. Um, so like I said, um, I'm not getting a lot done um, right now. Our life seems to have become quite busy um, because I'm back to work I'm no longer on mat leave um, but you know I actually am kind of surprised how much I'm getting through but just slowly plotting um, trying here and there to steal 10-15 minutes I'm doing the hashtag spin 15 and 15 so the um, brains behind that is to sit down at your wheel for 15 minutes every day through 2015 and um, just to be consistent and actually it's been um, a great challenge and, and has been working quite well for me so with that I think I'll jump right in and um, talk to you about what I've been reading what's on my wheel um, what's off my wheel um, and I've got um, I've stumbled across a couple of people on Ravelry that I wanted to share with you about um, to give us some inspiration about who's about some hand spun yarns out there. Um, yeah, so welcome to April's video pearl. Um, I guess the first thing that I should talk about is actually um, what I'm reading. Um, I'm gonna change on my tablet here. I'm gonna move things around a little bit. It's kind of weird recording the show a second time. I have to admit, um, it's like I've already talked about this, but I haven't really because you. If you haven't seen the original show, um, you won't have known. So, I've been reading um, the spring 2015 um, issue of Ply. It was called Lister. So it was on all of the Lister sheep. So Border Lister, Blue Face Lister, um, English Lister, all of the long wools. Um, back in the new year, um, January through to about this time, I had hoped on my blog that I would be able to do sort of a long wool study. I got a little bit derailed with that only because I got a bit bogged down with all of the BFL that I was spinning. And also because I had ordered some Lister long wool. I'll talk about this in a minute. Um, from Etsy, from a, uh, local farm and, um, I'm going to talk about her stuff in just a moment, but um, I kind of got bogged down with the spinning of it because um, I, well, I just got bogged down. So I've been making my way through this issue slowly. Um, I've been taking it to work. I kind of save it for work um, because often I want to read something at work, but I don't necessarily want to take my book with me or, and I knit a lot on my breaks at work, but um Sometimes I just want to um, read my magazine. So um, while I've been reading the magazine, I've been um, spinning up this stuff. So this was a um, Wensleydale Border Lister Cross. I wanted to use my other camera today because it's so much better, but I can't get it to work. So um, Mike and I are going to have to... Um, play around a little bit between now uh, today's show and uh, May's show sorry excuse me just let me look okay so all of this stuff that I'm just about to show you came from Wild Rose Farm um, it's reversed because of the camera sorry about that so Wild Rose Farm for anybody who is um, familiar with Washington State is located on Whidbey Island and from my house in Canada Whidbey Island is about an hour driving from here, not including border wait times. Um, so it's very close. Um, so Nan and Ken Lehman are the owners of this farm and they do English Lister, Longwool, Wensleydale and Teeswater. 
Um, on their card, they say processed wools, um, luxurious, high quality hand spinning fleeces, felting, and hand spun yarn. I think she gets some of her stuff that's on Etsy. I'm, I, I'm assuming, I don't know this for sure, but I think some of it she actually gets locally uh, mill spun and sells it in small batch. Um, small batches on Etsy. Anyways, she was amazing to deal with. Her Etsy shop, um, she responded right away. I told her what I was looking for. Um, she was just phenomenal to deal with. So if you're looking for um, kind of more like what I would call roving um, to work with and you're sort of looking for a long wool, something a bit more like, like raw to work with, um, definitely look into them and I've linked them down below in the show notes. So what I loved, her stuff comes like this or their stuff. This is from Sheep number 147 Peach. She's a border lister Wensleydale Lincoln Cross. And this is what it looks like when you get it. It's just amazing stuff. Really cool. It's roving. Um, like you can't kind of pre-draft it out like you can with comb top. The, the fibers are all jumbled and um, it spins more woolen than it spins worsted. So this was definitely, when I was spinning this, it was definitely a more woolen, um, woolen um, experience. And there are still some guard hairs in it, so I've just been kind of slowly pulling them out. Um, when, after I spun it, before I washed it, it definitely felt like it had been washed, like this is washed, um, but it feels kind of, it felt kind of like, um, kind of like it, kind of like spinning in the grease, kind of. It was sort of semi-clean. Um, there was quite a bit of dust that came off of it um, when I was spinning, so my lap was just chock -a block full of dust. Um, there was a little bit of yam in it. Um, but it was so wonderful to spin and like once you kind of get it into smaller pieces it just drafts out beautifully and I just spun it with a short backwards draw letting the twist into the drafting zone so it's sort of a semi woolen semi worsted kind of way of spinning and I love the resulting yarn so this is a two ply Spoiler alert, um, I'm going to do something with this and in, I'll talk about it in future shows. Um, I just haven't had a chance because I need uh, Mike to help me. Um, I'm going to, well, I'll, I'll save it because it might completely backfire and blow up in my face. But right now this is a two-ply. And um, what I'm going to do with it, so I have this one, I have Peach. This was, um, I can't remember what the sheet name and number was of this one. And I have this sheet over there, so I can't. I, I don't have it right here. And then the third one that I got was uh, a tease water. This was 100% tease water, roving. And this was from the sheep named Violet, number uh, 485. It's so neat knowing where the sheep, like their names and where it came from and the breed. And it's really neat. Sorry for the crinkling. And this is the tease water one. So again, it's roving, it's not um, top, it's not processed comb top. This one drafts a little bit better, but the fibers are quite long, because of course it's a tease, wa it's, um, a tease water. Um, here's the end, mm, yes, here's the end. <laughs> here's an end. So when you pull it apart, I should have brought my combs over and then I could have combed it out and you could have seen how long it was. So the, that's how long the staple lengths are. Quite long. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that. But what amazing timing because of um, getting this ply issue at, right at the same time. Like talk about, talk about timing. So the tease water and the uh, border list or cross, they're going to be spun as singles. And I'm hoping for enough yardage to knit another... Stephen West shawl and this was the East Gen shawl and I did this out of Barocco Ultra Alpaca on eight millimeter needles which is I think what the pattern calls for. I used every inch of yarn um, so I definitely need 200 yards out of um, all of those so um, I'm just hoping for enough yardage. We're going down to if anybody knows Washington State um, we're going down to LaConnor 
which is just outside of Anacortes, um, this spring. And if I need more, I'm actually going to call Nan ahead of time and ask her if we can visit the farm because they let people come and visit the farm. And, um, I think we're really neat for the kids to see because Nora won't understand. She's still too little, but James will, cause he's going to be three in four months. So, uh, I think it'd be really neat for him to see. And of course it's the spring, so they're lambing right now. So by the time we go, there'll be some lambs on the farm. Um, cause they keep their, 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 um, their flock is intergenerational. So they keep the lambs with the, uh, mums as far as I can tell, um, from the pictures and stuff, that's what it looks like. So, uh, it would be kind of neat for, for James to be able to see that. So, and the cool thing is, um, or one of the cool things about working with Nan she sent me a 90% Wensleydale sample from the Sheep Sunshine, who's number 184. And uh, this is what that looks like. So I'm going to spin that up just as a little sample and uh, maybe get some more from her when we're down there. Um, Nan was really wonderful to work with because I told her what I was looking for and I told her what kind of spinning project I was looking for and what kind of knitting project I wanted to do with that hand spun and she was really great about well I think this would work better than what you'd originally chosen why don't I send you this instead so it was really neat um working with somebody who spins and knits I think she weaves too um because she obviously really knows her stuff and it was uh yeah it was fun to 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 do that and to order that stuff so I will definitely be ordering more from her in the future and I can't wait to knit that shawl. That's going to be my summer project. So that's actually going on the wheel next to get that all finished. Um, the other thing that I am reading was actually something that Chrissy from the Snappy Stitches podcast recommended was um, this quarter's uh, spinoff magazine. So they've kind of done a re... What's it called when they re... Like they've updated, they've changed spin off a little bit. They've kind of um, made it a little bit more modern um, in terms of like the graphics and the design and stuff. The articles are still the same. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that I'm really looking forward to getting into and to reading. I know one of the articles that um, Chrissy was really excited about was um, blend blending, I think. Oh, over dyeing. So you can look. So I can't, I can't find, I'm not going to look for the actual article, but, um, I think it's, um, where you kind of look at your braids of hand spun and you over dye them to make them a little bit more, yes, this is it, to make them a little bit more, um, cohesive. So those are the original, uh, samples over here and then they over dye them to make the samples a little bit more cohesive so they're a little bit easier to knit with and find projects for. Knit, weave, crochet, whatever your kind of um, crafting choice is. So I'm really looking forward to reading this because I am taking a natural dye course in the fall um, through a local shop um, and I'm really excited about it. Um, and so I'm looking forward to reading some of this stuff in prep for that. So that's what I'm reading. I kind of blasted through that, so I hope that wasn't too fast. I am going to pause here because I think what's happening with the audio is that I'm recording for too long, and then when I go to edit it, it's too much for because um, it's just a crappy camera that I'm using last time and today. Um, I think it's just too much, and it can't um, process stuff. So I'm going to pause here, and then we'll uh, pick up where I left off um, with uh, what's on my wheel. Hi everyone. Um, sorry about that. I just don't want to overload my camera. Um, I, I am going to uh, fix this issue, but I haven't had a chance. It's just been a little bit too crazy. Um, for anybody who watched last, the original April show, when I recorded, I was super distracted because um, I was in the process of trying to pick up so Charlie, our, one of our dogs, had gone in um, to the vet for some issues with his gut, and it ended up being okay, but he did get boarded for twenty, just over 24 hours. And he, um, <laughs> the monkey ate a bunch of chicken bones, and they just irritated his gastric mucosal lining and caused a little bit of mild pancreatitis and an ileus, and he's such a picklehead. <laughs> so anyways, um, 
I was super distracted last show as well and so I kind of don't mind re-recording because I just felt like my mind was somewhere else I was a bit worried about him for obvious reasons and um, I had to scramble to get childcare for Nora and but thankfully a really good friend of mine didn't even hesitate when I asked her and I'm really thankful to her but it ended up being a little bit of a stressful week last week and my husband was in Kansas so that didn't help anything <laughs> so thank you so much for bearing with me I really appreciate it um, we all are so passionate about our, our crafts and I uh, it's really great to be able to sit down and share all of this but with you but um, there's life as well and I mean we all understand that so sorry for the tangent <laughs> but uh, anyways um, so for those of you who are wondering, Charlie is actually home and he's doing he's doing fine. He's got an ear infection as a result of the chicken bones. They just irritated his whole system, which is uh, quite common. So unfortunately, um, we've got to deal with that now. It's kind of a little bit of fallout. But. So I'm not really prepping anything to spin because um, I've been working on some projects that have been hanging over me for a while. Um, and I have a blog post up and coming. I haven't finished it yet, but I've been thinking about kind of these projects that sort of hang over my head and how to tackle that and really wanting some feedback from you guys on sort of how do you manage those projects that sort of seem to go on and on and on. So this is one of them. This was uh, the December 2014 Sweet Georgie Yarns Fiber Club. And it was called Glitterati. It's got some really dark navy blues, some white, and then the, these um, tealy royal blues. Sorry, I got dog hair all in it. Not that you can see that, but still. And it's got sparkle in it. So it's super wash merino um, and, and um, nylon and, and sparkle. So one of the spinning notes that Felicia wrote um, on the Fiber Club um, sheet that she um, includes with the Fiber Club was um, that this would be great for socks. But I got seconds of this club. And after doing a whole bunch of sampling, this is it opened up. It hasn't actually been opened up for about two months. So I'll just pull it apart a little bit so you can kind of see. So there's a lot of bar barber pulling, but then I've got these big chunks where it's solid. Because what I did was I sampled. And for anybody who knows me, knows how much I love to sample. I like sampling more than I like the actual spinning of the entire braid. Um, so I did some samples. So I did a singles, which when it's super wash merino, I always worry about it falling apart. Um, Cause you can't really like slightly felt or slightly or full the yarn at all, but that's how that turned out. And it was, I liked it. I, I liked the keeping the colors together. So then I did a Navajo plied sample and I liked that a lot. Um, but it kept the white and the navy blue together so much that I ended up when when you pull this these ones apart this the singles one's probably the best example see how dark it is and then you've got all the white there so um there's a lot of like really stark contrasts and it didn't the the colorway name was uh, starry nights and I thought well this doesn't really look like a starry night now that does this, although they're really pretty, don't get me wrong. So then I did a three plied sample and I really liked this, but I didn't want to give up the yardage of a three ply. I wanted more yardage than, than that. And this really reminds me of starry nights. Like this really reminded me of what a night sky looks like. Cause you've got those, those hits of white. It's a little bit more blended. Um, I really, really liked this one. I, I actually really liked all of them. It was really hard deciding. And then this was the two ply and actually funnily enough, this was the one that I liked the least, but it's actually the one that I ended up going with. Um, but what I did, and I'm, I did this with the seconds with the second, um, bag that I got the, I spun, I divided it in three the 100 grams, I divided it into three. So it's roughly um, 33 grams roughly each, because as you can see, this bobbin is quite a bit less. And what I did was I spun three bobbins. So I did this, that with this one too. I spun three bobbins. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll start off with this. 
So this is dark blue, so I'm going to start plying with this bobbin here. And when the color starts to change, I'll switch to this one. So I sort of, I call it intentional color plying, but what ended up happening was that's what gave me these big runs of matched color and uh, big runs of the white and the gray. So, and then I did get at the end, of course, when I was bracelet plying, I did end up with some barber polling because I just couldn't help it. Um, but I think it makes it more interesting. So what I'd really like to do with this, so this is what I'm working on right now, and I'm hoping that I can get this plied this weekend, although I don't I don't think it's going to happen because I'm hopefully going to be working if they call. Um, and I have my best friend's little girl tomorrow afternoon to help them out. Tomorrow's Saturday. Today is Friday. It's Friday, April 25th, 2015. So um, you can see the sparkle in that. So I'm kind of hoping that I can get this plied up, but I don't know, hopefully, maybe. But this was really fun to sample because uh, now I can put these in my journal and write about which one I chose and how I ended up plying it. So that's what I'm working on right now. And I added quite a bit of twist to this. So as you can see, there's quite a, quite a good, I'll show you where the barber pulling is. There's quite a good twist angle there. I think it's, I think it's 45 degree angle. It was quite tight. I added quite a bit of twist to this. Um, and why I did that was because I, re I just really liked what it looked like more than anything. Um, I just really liked um, how the dark, when it was plied like that nice and tight, it just um, really, I don't know, it just really finishes the yarn. It makes it really pop. And because of the super wash, um, for, I really like um, really high twist super wash. Like think high, high twist sock yarn, right? wears a little bit better, it's a little bit stronger. Um, and so I wanted that to be an option if I wanted to do something different with this second 100 grams. Um, so what I'd really like to do with this is actually the Eternalism Vest by um, Talitha. I'm gonna pause here just one moment. Sorry about that. Um, James needed a water refill. <laughs> um, so that's my Glitterati. Um, the uh, Eternalism Vest is what I'm thinking about uh, making with this yarn. And that was in Interweave um, Interweave Knits a while ago. And this is what it looks like. So it's knit bottom up and then um, attached to the back neck. So um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be kind of a fun knit. Um, the other thing is that I finished um, was, and I did do a blog post on this, so I'm not going to talk about it too, too much, was this blend. This was um, Hedgehog Fibers February 2014 Fiber Club. Um, I did three months, a three month installment of Hedgehog Fibers, um, their Fiber Club. I really enjoyed doing it, but I, I won't do it again. But that's only because I just don't want to do Fiber Clubs anymore. Um, this was what the original fiber looked like. So this was a merino silk alpaca, black alpaca, and silk blend, or uh, sparkle. Yeah, silk and sparkle. And this is what it looked like prepped. Lots of color. You see the black in there. So bright, bright, bright colors for dyeing when it was dyed. Um, and there's gold sparkle through the whole thing, which you can see sort of when the light catches the windows over here. So when the light catches it, it's pretty cool. Um, the black alpaca really toned down the colors in this because when I first got it in the mail, I was like, Ooh, that's a lot of color. Um, but actually, it's really pretty. So um, I know what this is going to be. It's a secret. And... Um, I'm just really looking forward to getting the la the next, um, I, I got seconds of this club so that I would have enough to do something with it. So this is my second to last bobbin done. I have one more bobbin that's on the wheel right now and I have this much fiber left to spin. I think it's about, I think I've got about 30 grams left, so it's not that much. Um, and I'll just talk about the blends for just a minute. So. The merino and the alpaca is a great um, blend because the alpaca is really, really warm. 
it's light and it's soft and um, it's got a little bit of um, a, a bit of a luster to it. There's many, many, many different colors of alpaca. I think there's 22 natural colors of alpaca. But it doesn't have any elasticity. So when you mix it with wool, um, you get the benefits of the alpaca, but you also got to get the elasticity and the memory of the wool. Um, and the nice thing is in our climate, it's really hard to wear alpaca, 100% alpaca, all like at any time of the year. We just don't get enough cold weather. So um, mixing it with the wool, which is very warm as well, but not as warm as the alpaca, means that I can knit and spin with it um, without worrying about how um, hot I'm going to be at the end or if I'm gifting it to somebody how hot they're going to be because we just don't get the weather here that ne you need 100% alpaca so it's nice um, this was wonderful to work with I thought that um, having all of the silk in there silk was the second listed um, sort of ingredient if you will um, of the blend and um, so, you know, it has a relatively high silk content, even though um, they didn't list the percentages. Um, but actually, it was lovely to spin. It's It's been really fast to spin, too. And I put a relative amount of, high amount of twist into this. And I wrote about this on my blog about um, doing a slightly higher twist Navajo ply. And I really, really like the results. Um, I might even put it through my wheel one more time to add a little teeny tiny bit more twist, but I'm gonna see. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's quite high twist, but not not super, super, super high twist, but um, much higher than I think a lot of people put in their Navajo, Navajo plied yarns. So that was that. And the other thing, again, I'm not gonna talk about it a ton because I did a blog post on this, but this was my Sweet Georgie Yarns Strawberry Season. It was the July 2014 Fiber Club. This was the traditional three ply, and this was the um, Navajo plied sample or um, braid. So these are each 100 grams of each four four ounces. And uh, I did this one actually back during Spinzilla, and I wasn't happy with it when it when I finished it. But actually looking at it now, I quite like it. I'm really hoping somebody had suggested on the blog when I posted this um, this yarn and did this blog post which is linked below um somebody had suggested finding a project where i could incorporate both braids of yarn and that they thought that would be really cool and i totally agree um it's just gonna be a matter of finding something so um yeah um but again higher twist and uh i'm just really happy with how these turned out so that is that. I did have some stash acquisition, stash enhancement, whatever you want to call it, this month. Um, I'm just going to blast through it a little bit and just show you. This is my sweet Georgia mug. It came with, um, when did I get this? I think it was a temp tempestuous affair back in October when um, Holly Yo released her stuff and it was right before... Um, Knit City, I think. Yeah, it was the weekend. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, Chrissy from the Snappy Stitches podcast, we went together and we got these mugs in the grab bags, which is really cool. I'm a big Sweet Georgia fan. I think Felicia is just lovely. She's wonderful. Um, and uh, her stuff is just so high quality. Um, and I was over the moon when I saw they had mugs because I just love mugs. Um, so... Back in February, I spun a braid of, um, and I, I talked about it on the, on the podcast. Um, I spun a braid of, uh, Three Waters Farm. Was it Falkland? I think it was a Falkland. It was called November Morning. I'm going to actually look it up. I've got my tablet right here. Um, it was Falkland. It was this braid here. I'll show you the picture. Um, this is actually kind of nice having my tablet right here to show you guys stuff. So I think I might, if, if you don't mind sort of a little bit disjointed, um, me like looking at, looking up stuff and whatnot, um, I'm going to keep doing this for future shows cause it's nice to be able to show you stuff when I, as I'm talking about it. So that was my, a, a spin that I did in February. It was the October, no, it was the November club, November 2014 club. 
my husband had given me it, it as a gift for a few months and then I decided to cancel it. And when I uh, spun that braid in February, um, I won, I'm not sure how Marianne does the uh, spin along winners for the end of the month, but miraculously I won. And so she sent me a coupon code for the Etsy shop and I wasn't going to use it um, because I have a lot of stash right now and I'm not the kind of person that likes to have a lot of stash. I like having a smaller stash, use it all up, get more, use it all up. Like I like having a um, a living, breathing stash where you're adding and taking away quite consistently, um, constantly. Um, and also, we just don't have the space for me to store a really big stash. Um, because, I mean, in an ideal world, I'd love to have a huge stash. But I did get a few braids. Um, so, spoiler alert, I got three. And um, the first one was a Falkland. I love Falkland, guys. <laughs> This is Morning Mist. It's got some hits of red, knit, blue, grays. Not sure. I think this is going to be a toque. And it'll be a three ply, and then I'll do a toque out of it. Just love it. So that was the first one that I got. And then I bought a Merino Tussa Silk 80 20 blend, and this was Spring Broom's Edge. These are totally my colors. And the last one that I bought was Bottom Land and it's a Polworth Tessa silk blend. And actually, I hadn't thought of this before, but I might combo spin these two. I might do, um, I might do a two ply, one ply, two ply, um, be, or the second ply, because um, the colors are actually quite close. You can tell what kind of mood I was in, and I think that they would be really pretty plied together. And of course, I'm all about having lots of yardage. Um, it would give me enough yardage to do a big shawl, because I'd probably get a boat. Depending on how fine I spin, if I did like a light sport heavy fingering, I'd probably get about 600 yards. So uh, I think I'm going to uh, combo spin these. So I'll do, um, I'll spin uh, singles and singles and then I'll apply them together. So that's what I'm thinking about that. I'm actually really excited about that because I love those colors. Um, so that's what I bought for stash enhancement. And finally, I wanted to talk, well, second to finally, I've got one more thing after that. I've got um, some hand spun knitting that I started this month. I had shown you a while ago um, the Holden shawl that I was working on out of my um, Hedgehog Fibers 50-50 Merino Silk Blend. And this was my sample that I spun for it. It's got these gold and yellows and these denim blues. And then it's got mauve in there which I think you probably can't really see but um you can really see it here this was one of my little little skeins so I Navajo plied this because I spun it quite fine and um I um I wanted to keep the, the with the yellow and the gold or <laughs> the yellow and the gold the gold and the blue the denim blue I just felt like if I two plied it or three plied it, it would end up so blended that it would just muddy everything. Um, Cause these golden yellows, they're just beautiful. And then, but it's very gray and it's very subdued as it is. Um, these are my favorite colors. Um, and so when I was doing the Holden shawl, it's stockinette stitch. Um, it's a triangular shawl. And it's stockinette stitch, and then it goes into a lace at the bottom. And lots of people have added beads along the bottom. But I just didn't like what the yarn looked like in the um, stockinette. So I started looking for a um, garter shawl. So I started the Multnoma. So the Multnoma is by Kate Ray. About 10,000 people have knitted on Ravelry, so if you haven't heard of it, there are tons of, um, tons and tons of projects, 10,000 projects on Ravelry. 
but that's what it's looking like knit up. The yarn is, of course, a bit kinky because I, I I ripped and rewound the yarn and I didn't wash it in between. So this will all be a lot, the garter stitch will be a lot smoother when it blocks out. But I, re, I prefer this. I prefer the garter stitch be in this yarn because it just blends it a little bit more. It just really works. So, uh, yeah. So I'm still, I'm at... I think I have a dozen more rows to go before I start the lace. So I have a lot of yarn. Like I've got this huge um, wound cake here. I've got this wound cake here. And I've got these two mini cakes here. I've got one here and then another one that's actually connected to my knitting right now. This is my yarn that I wound. So um, I think what I'm going to do is when I get to the lace section, I'm just going to keep knitting until I run out of yarn. Uh, just like I did with my... Um, Shaylin shawl I just kept knitting until I ran out of yarn so um and that worked beautifully gave me also a bigger drapier shawl and I'm also going to try to figure out um I'm going to try to add some beads to the uh, before this falls off the table uh to the feather and fan section of the um shawl so the shawl looks like this. These are six millimeter glass beads. They're just from Michael's. I think they were $3 a package. Um, it's going to slow me down a lot when I get to the lace section, but I'm kind of excited about it because I think with the picking up on the yellow in here and of course the yellow and the or gold and the denim blue, of course they're complements. And um, I think having the beads along the edge will kind of tie it all together. Um, for anybody who doesn't know what the Multnomah shawl looks like, it's this one. Beautiful, hey? It's it's named after Multnomah County in Oregon. And Oregon is one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. Um, we just love it down there. So, um, yeah. I've been working on this forever. I probably will continue to work on it forever. This is the shawl that never ends. Um, it keeps on going on, my friends. So, uh, you might not see it for a while, but I am working on it slowly but surely in the background. So I mentioned that um, I'm back to work. Um, my mat leave is uh, was over a month ago exactly today, actually. Um, so I work casual. I resigned from my educator position that I had. So um, I've been casting on a lot of socks because socks are great uh, for me to be able to take to work. Um, so I thought I would show you what I'm working on for my socks, but this is not hand spun knitting. This is um, just commercial yarn. But I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you because this is the kind of stuff that I don't blog about. So this is the first sock that I've been working on. I'm doing two at a time. These are, this is the Fish Lips Kiss Heel pattern, which is really popular right now. Lots of people are working on it. This is my fourth pair. I think they're my fourth pair using the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. And this is Sweet Georgie Yarns Superwash BFL. It's their Superwash BFL sock base in the colorway tavern. So this uh, golden yellows, army green, gray, and this like magenta red. Magenta pink. It's not pink. It's like a magenta e red. It's really beautiful. So um, as you can see, I'm on the ribbing of the second sock, and I have actually started the the, the leg of the second sock. Um, I've been just sort of working on it when I can, and um, really knitting up. Um, this is what it looks like in the cake. And I wound two cakes, and then I've been knitting from each cake, so it worked out really well. And, this is the yeah BFL sock. So 80% superwash blue face lister and 20% nylon. And that's it there. Sweet Georgia. Um so that's one pair of socks I'm working on. And the other pair of socks I just started, and actually the only reason why I started new socks was because um I find it really hard to do the toes of socks at work. Um, because I do have to concentrate like a little bit. So um, this is Drops Fable print, superwash wool, 
it's um, 75% wool, 25% um, nylon. Looks like this. I got it from my local yarn store, which is 88 stitches. It's like five minutes from my house walking, which is lethal. And I'm knitting these on my chow goos. And actually, normally I knit uh, socks on 2.25 millimeter needles because I'm such a tight knitter. I often go up by 0.25 or 0.5 millimeters for all patterns, um, everything. I have to go up half, a quarter or a half needle size. But with these, I actually decided to knit them on two millimeter needles. Um, these are 32 inch circulars, chow goos. My other ones are my sock rockets um, that are my favorites. I use them 99% of the time. Um, but the this yarn is a little bit finer than what I usually use, which is BF, um, the, the BFL sock from Sweet Georgia. So um, I did size down to the two mil millimeters and it just means I'm gonna have more stitches. So that's what it's knitting up like. It's the toe. So I'm just finishing the toe and I just started the, no, I've got two more increased rows of the toe before I start the foot because these are gonna be more stitches for the same size. So this is my foot template. You see I've got a little bit more to go. So this is for, this is part of the fish lips kiss heel pattern. So that's my other sock project. So once I finish the toes of those two, I'll put them aside until I finish my BFL socks. Um, because uh, then these will be my next take to work project. And um, then I'll, when I get close to finishing these, then I'll start some more toes so that they're ready to go to take to work when I finish these ones and so on and so forth. I'd like to knit um, Mike, my husband, another pair of socks this year. So I think probably my next pair of socks will be um, for him. Um, yeah, so in terms of my knitting, it's nothing really very exciting. Um, I just don't have a lot of time right now to knit. And when I do have a time to sit down and do something, I'd prefer to spin. Um, and I've been reading a ton right, lately because um, I find sometimes that's really all I have energy and um, the mental capacity for is to just sit and have a cup of tea and, and um, yeah, read. And not necessarily nonfiction because actually 80% of what I read is nonfiction. But recently I've been reading a lot of fiction. So... It's just, you know, fallout from being back to work and just being tired, you know. I know you guys all understand. Um, the last thing that I wanted to share with you, and this is a new segment, it's just um, hand spun inspiration. Um, I thought that I would start showing you um, if I come across someone on Ravelry that I just find really inspiring and they're um, doing a lot of hand spun knitting and they're doing a lot of hand spun skeins, that I thought that I would um, feature them. So, this is Octopus Knits on Ravelry, and her name is Nell. She's from California. And this is the kind of stuff that Nell does, and it's beautiful. <laughs> so this is a Navajo plied skein of Southern Cross Fibers. Just beautiful stuff that she's doing. Really, uh, really neat. Here's another one that she just finished. This is Southern Cross Fiber as well. I think this is Pol yeah, this is Polworth Tensil. Uh, uh, blend really gorgeous stuff so I encourage you to look her up on Ravelry she also uh, knits with her hand spun so uh, here are some mitts that she did I'll just uh, see if I can bring it up kind of a gradient that she spun love those so for a man in her life and uh, I'll show you one more thing because I just loved this when I saw it. Beautiful colors. This was one of her other hands. But this is a bias scarf that she did. Isn't that gorgeous? Purples and yellows and greens and really pretty. So definitely check her out on Ravelry. I've linked to her below. Her name's Nell. And uh, she's Octopus Knits on Ravelry. I think that brings us to the end of the show. Um, I hope the audio this time is okay and that you don't have to listen to the show and aren't able to watch. I know a couple of people have messaged me and said that that's what they did in lieu of watching the show and I really appreciate that you stuck with me <laughs> and that you did that. 
Um, happy April. I hope you have a wonderful beginning of May and um, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.